There's a new Star Trek movie opening this week, so I thought I would do an opportunistic tie-in. Ready? Here are five spaced out things about Star Trek movies. Number one, the franchise's periodic identity crises. During its original TV run, Star Trek was a sometimes earnest, sometimes goofy sci-fi show with a penchant for social commentary, but its first movie felt a lot more like a second-rate 2001 A Space Odyssey than a big-screen wagon train to the stars. Luckily, the series veered back towards socially conscious space adventure beginning with Star Trek II, and mostly kept heading in that direction until the original crew retired and the Next Generation gang took over. That transition led to another marked shift in tone and focus, as seen most obviously in number two, Captain Picard's off-screen personality transplant. On TV, Captain Jean-Luc Picard was a man of patience and intellect, an ethical man who sought compromise and peaceful resolutions whenever possible. In the movies, starting with Star Trek First Contact, Picard became a grim-faced, cold-blooded ass-kicker. On TV, he played the flute and quoted Shakespeare, but in the movies, he drove a dune buggy and couldn't even quote from Moby Dick without sounding like he really wanted to kill somebody. Although, now that I think about it, Picard was not the only major Star Trek character to start acting wildly out of character once making the jump from the small screen to the silver screen. After all, how could we forget about number three? Spock's gross mind meld assault. Okay, I know it was a back against the wall type of situation, but still I can't help but wince whenever I watch that scene where Spock grabs Valeris and forcibly mind melds with her in an attempt to learn the location of the secret Federation Klingon peace conference so they can stop the assassination plot against the Federation president. I mean, here's one of our heroes of Star Trek forcing himself psychically on a woman while his fellow heroes stand around and watch, and then when it's over, nobody says shit about it. Not cool, Spock. I thought I grokked you, but now I'm not sure. To make matters even more uncomfortable, this all happened in Star Trek VI, one of the best of all the Star Trek movies, which was then followed by Star Trek Generations, or, as I call it, number four, that half-assed, why-even-bother crossover. Generations is a transitional film, it's primarily a next-gen movie with a few stragglers from the original series still hanging around for some reason. I mean, what was the point here? If the producers wanted to do a next-generation movie, why not just do a next-generation movie? And if they wanted to do a movie where the crews of the two Enterprises met, why not make that the movie? Instead, we have Kirk showing up near the end to be Picard's sidekick in a story that has nothing to do with Kirk. And, spoiler alert, Kirk is killed Picard buries him under a pile of rocks and just leaves him there, I guess? I know it's been over 20 years, but God damn it, I demand a do-over. And actually, why can't I have one? I mean, it's not as if they've ever been particularly shy about using time travel in Star Trek. Number five, don't you mean time trek? Despite being centered on characters whose job it is to explore space, Four of the 13 Star Trek films so far have been time travel stories. The first was Star Trek IV, where Captain Kirk and crew traveled back in time to save the whales. The most recent was the 2009 reboot film, where Spock traveled back in time to turn William Shatner into Chris Pine. Which actually makes more sense now that we've seen Kirk's father. Shatner looks nothing like Thor. Anyway, the time travel films have been pretty good for the most part, but I still have to wonder why the producers of Star Trek movies have felt it necessary to resort to time travel as a plot device so often. I mean, is it really that difficult to think of shit for these characters to do in their own era? It's fucking Star Trek. The setting is the entire galaxy filled with colorful aliens. What does Kirk need with a time ship? The hardest part is picking only five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also, please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron. Thanks for watching, and live long and prosper.